This is AndyTube. In this video, I want to show you how I go about cleaning all that old cruddy uh, grease off of the horizontal arm worm gear, especially where it uh, mates with the gear on the bottom of the cam stack on this Singer Model 513. But this method is uh, what I would do um, on just about any sewing machine with a cam stack. So um, to, to get in there and work on the area and see it better, I want to remove this. And I'm going to call it the pattern selector wheel. You go like from zigzag to blind hem and stuff. So it's easy to remove and put back in. And it uh, gives me a chance to clean underneath it, the, the wheel itself, but also gives me a lot better access down into the worm gear here. So um, this is a screw right here that, that's holding this on. And you, you can see like there's a groove cut right through the top of it. But you don't really need a big giant um, screwdriver that big to, to take it off. Um, I just take a, a screwdriver to one side of it. And that's enough to loosen that screw and remove it. So, um, you know, and you, and you can pick either side that you want. Oh, you know what? I, I, I want to say the for my own remembrance um, there's a there's a pin that lines up this little selector spring here and the pin is right there so before I uh, remove anything I rotate the hand wheel um, or the shaft until it's just facing towards the me towards the front of the machine there uh, I just remember or write down whether this selector spring is in the left depression or the right depression. And I usually just do it to the left because that's usually where it sits anyway. And then I'm just I'm going to take out this um, screw here and lift that spring off, and then I can get the wheel off and I can get the cams underneath it. Okay, so I'll show you this screw. So see that's just a, a big hollow screw. It's a wide, wide body I guess you'd call it. And this is what I call the selector spring. It's got a little button on the end that fits in the groove to lock it in place when you make you know when you make your selection and it's just this, uh, this nice steel spring now the wheel will just lift straight up and off of that okay you can see all these uh, kind of gear looking things on the bottom and you can see it's kind of like a little keyhole and that little what I call the keyhole opening fits over the pin that's on the cam stack here a little silver pin so when we've got that selector wheel off, we can now take out the cams. And there's there's two physical cams. The top one is um, I think for the blind hem. It doesn't really it doesn't really say, but the writing and printing and stuff is on the bottom and the smooth faces up and it's got the same keyhole pattern that goes over the same pin okay 
So we'll set that. And then the next cam actually is kind of like a double cam. It's, it's double thick and has two different patterns. <coughs> and it says uh, Singer 103597 on the top. But you see when I turn it here, you see how thick it is? And you see on the bottom it's got a recessed area. And I'll, I'll show you why in a minute. But it actually has a couple of different patterns on it. But it's all in, in one. These aren't like stuck together. It's just a double thick piece of plastic. You know, it's twice as thick as the other cam. And it has uh, two different patterns in it. So the reason that this is recessed here is because it fits onto the top kind of tube and um, <coughs> of the cam stack. This is the top of the cam stack. And there's that steel pin um, I talked about. So when you put them back together, you just put the double cam first with the recess down so it sits down on the top of that cam stack like that and then you take your uh, second one with the with the smooth side up not the side that's a little recessed and has printing on it but the side that's smooth on the top and you set it over that keyhole and pin just like that and then you would set your uh, selector wheel and you put your little spring and since I took it off from the left I'm gonna put it back on the left and then I would screw my uh, put the big screw back in there and tighten it all back up so you see that's that's very easy and, and if you're not you know if you're worried about remembering the assembly process because it might be hours or days before you reassemble. Um, just take pictures. You know, take your own little movie or take some uh, pictures as you go with what, what piece. Some people like to lay all the pieces out in order that they're removed. So if that, if that works for you, you can do that too. But now that I got all of that off, um, me back out here and I'm gonna go a little handheld here lift up my tripod see if we can oh yeah now you can see all that mucky oil the three different kinds of oil I got I got the original brown stuff and then something was put on top of that and then it looks like the last one was some kind of a creamy um, lithium grease is how it looks and smells so I want to get all of that off yeah look look at all of that see that Yuck. so <laughs> I want to get all of that off of there and um, after I clean the machine I will put a better grease on there than that but that that gives me some room and it shows me down here on the am I getting that shot down in here on the bottom of the cam stack is the gear that goes all the way around the cam stack and that meshes with this worm gear so when the main shaft is rotating that's what rotates the cam gear See that? and look at all the crud built up on that and all that old grease so you know if you want to leave that on there that's that's your choice but I get it out of there I don't, I don't like to leave, leave that there the machine is what 40 some years old so I want to get it all out I want to get all the dust and dirt and grime and grease and everything out of this machine they usually run better with fresh oil and grease so uh, what I'm going to do is start attacking that first 
with good old Q-tips. Um, just dry, dry Q-tips at first. I just want to go in, and if you can get like a, a rag in there and, and get it, um, you know, if you get a brush of some kind or a wood or plastic scraper, just go in, and I'm going to get as much of that off first before I use any chemicals. Because the chemicals are just going to wash it down inside. So I don't want to muck this all out later when it's uh, wet from the chemicals. I want to get as much of this stuff off as possible. So I'm going to be watching a football game and <laughs> and doing this. And when I, get, when I get most of that out, I'll come back and show you how I use a chemical on that to clean it. Okay? Okay, we'll see you back. Okay, I've uh, gone ahead and I've used the Q-tips to get out as much as I could of all that grease and muck. And then uh, once I got the bulk of it out, I take my plastic, uh, you know, just a uh, toothbrush and I go in and uh, clean out especially in the gears and you can just like hold the brush uh, with one hand while you uh, rot rotate the hand wheel and it takes quite a few turns for the camp stack gear to make a complete turn so you want to do that uh, you know get a couple of complete turns and then I wipe off the excess gear uh, you know just on a paper towel or a rag or something and you can see that I've really got a lot of that uh, stuff off of there off uh, the old grease off of there and off of the shaft and uh, you know back here I move since I have the face the control panel off the needle position always wants to go left and there's the uh, um, follower there so I just hold it to the right and I can get in on the back side of that uh, worm gear area and get a lot more of the grease out and you can even if you if you do have the control panel off you can get in here under the cam stack area if there's any uh, grease and stuff that has gotten trapped down in there. So the, the reason I'm doing the video is I've had a couple dozen people write to me and say that they really um, <clears throat> they're, they don't want to or they are uncomfortable doing a breakdown as much as I do. Taking off as many parts of the machine and taking out the uh, electrical and doing the full body wash and dry like I've, I've posted a few videos of but they want to get all that stuff out or as much of it so if that is your goal you if you did this you, you could stop right now and just put your new grease on and uh, you would be way way ahead of the game if that's you know if that's what you want to do and it's not it's not that hard and at the end of the video, I can put maybe a link to one of my wash videos and a link to one of the applying grease back to that gear. So if you haven't seen those videos on my channel, you can take a look at them. But I'm going to go ahead and, and clean some more off on this. But uh, I want to put my camera back on the tripod so, so that I can show you that. So let me do that and then we'll come back. Okay, uh, the chemical that I use, if you if you haven't seen it in other videos, is this uh, original crud cutter, concentrated cleaner and degreaser, and I buy it's about nine bucks a gallon. I just buy mine at uh, you know big box stores or, or hardware stores. And it comes in a in a one quart spray bottle too. I just do enough cleaning that I it's cheaper to buy the gallon, buy it by the gallon. 
and uh, for something like this I, I wouldn't use it at more than a 50 percent crud cutter to 50 percent water that's about what I've got in here in this little cup is you know I put a splash of crud cutter and I put a splash just of tap water in there and that's what I'm going to use to kind of get the rest of that greasy feeling off of there so that my new grease will adhere uh, much much better and uh, I would not use that crud cutter on any black Singer machine period um, period so that's a warning and a heads up uh, on these painted machines crud cutter is not too bad if you don't leave it on there if you leave it on there for a while it will dull the finish it won't ruin it like on a black Singer like a 66 or 201 99k but it will dull the, the finish. I found that out the first time I used it. I sprayed everything down, let it sit about 10 minutes, and then I had to actually use a rubbing compound for, for automobiles to, to kind of bring a gloss back. So I learned that the hard way. So, <clears throat> But if, if it's just for a little bit, um, it, works, it works fine. And what, what I do around that area is I pack it with these cotton squares. These are, uh, I guess, typically called a makeup remover. I bought these. It comes 82 a package at the at the dollar store, and and I like this type. Um, I like the rectangle shape, but also inside they're just very soft uh, cotton filling like like that, but on the outside. They've got um, some kind of a, a harder, stiffer fabric cover to kind of hold them together. I mean, they'll still, you know, come apart and stuff. But I don't like to get all the little cotton pieces stuck on, on the machine. <coughs> so um, I put one in here already underneath. So I'm going to take another one and just stuff it in. And I, I use wood barbecue sticks to kind of get it in there um, and what I want to do is kind of pre prevent a lot of it dripping out the bottom and onto the work bed the sewing bed of the machine then I'll come up around though that gear on the top is that still gonna show pretty good yeah and uh, maybe I'll maybe stick uh, another one I want to go down over near the light fixture and you know kind of pack one in there to absorb anything that overflows and uh, I might oh I just saw a big big glob of grease back here I missed see if I can get it out of there yeesh man that waxy greasy stuff I don't know what that is look at that yeah <laughs> yeah so <clears throat> uh, anyway a lot of times I will go back behind the worm gear uh, let's see if I can get one stuff back in there and what's nice is I usually put this crud cutter on and since it's not going to be on any exposed paint I'll let it sit there a while to really break down that grease and when it's these cotton pads will absorb it and kind of hold it against the shaft and the gear instead of just letting it drip off so let me try and move the tripod here can you see what i've done here pack one behind one to protect the light a couple underneath i might i might go down here uh oh i already put one down there yeah, you can see it from the front here where I've put them in. I'm, I've got them kind of underneath, just just to protect the dripping. And you you may want to uh, put you know some kind of plastic on your work surface in case some does go down the 
vertical shaft over here but if you're careful uh, you don't really need a lot of this stuff and especially the way uh, I have you put it on or suggest that you put it on with a with a little artist paint brush you know so um, if if you have concerns about this area dripping dripping down here and so forth you can wrap rags around it or you can take like a you know a plastic grocery bag or I kind of use these tall kitchen garbage bags and, and put in here to protect the area then I'll take like old t-shirt rags or like in this case an old oil rag and I'll stick it in here and after I put it on I'll check to see if any is obviously dripping out and I'll I'll wipe it up matter of fact let me keep that out of there for a wipe later so uh, put this down here now I would usually just stand it up and do this okay um, I guess I could well I'll just I'll just tilt it so that you can get a better view but I usually just let the machine stand upright and brush this stuff on so this is my mixture of about half crud cutter and half water and this is a, a cheap uh, artist brush I bought a bag of like I don't know 15 or 20 of these for about four bucks at Walmart different sizes and different st stiffnesses and this one is fairly uh, soft bristle and I'll just you know dip it in the mixture there and I will start brushing it on that worm gear and kind of around on the shaft a little bit and I'll put it around try and get it on the gear at the bottom of the camshaft and uh, when you put it on here you don't I, I really don't rotate anything anymore like turn the hand wheel because it's a liquid it'll just you know it'll just drip down around everything and get in there so I think I'll stand it up here a little bit but you, you're getting the idea now if you've got the dirty greasy spot under here and you happen to have the control panel off you can go ahead and brush a little bit of that on doesn't take doesn't take a whole lot and I get some more I had some grease spread way out onto the arm there when I was trying to wipe it up with the with the q-tips so um, if you've already done the q-tips and brush you don't need any more you don't need any more action just the chemical will start dissolving this grease pretty pretty quickly um, you know I've had cases where I've had the been able to remove the wiring up top and light fixture out and I and I just uh, use this and the toothbrush and dip the toothbrush in here and just kind of went in there with that nylon toothbrush and scrubbed everything and uh, that worked pretty good but this uh, 513 model it's kind of tight quarters around in here so I got out what I could with the q-tips and the toothbrush and wiping everything up and it did real good so I, I don't I don't now I'm just putting this on with uh, with a little bit of uh, and since, since I put those cotton pads right around the worm gear I don't want to uh, turn the wheel too much and rotate that too much because I don't want that cotton to get sucked in there to the cam stack gear you know um, now when I go to take this off, I'll wipe off uh, what I can, and then I'll use this same brush, and I'll put some alcohol on there to give it kind of like a rinse. So this is this is really I can see, you know, the grease that was left behind just turning into kind of this brown milky solution and dripping off there. So and I think I've got pretty good between all those worm gears they're kind of a deep um, 
gear on there and that dirt can get or the dirt <laughs> the grease and, and grit and dirt can get in deep on there and uh, get hard so you know when you're working on it look for that and if if you see some that's left in there and you want you know take take a toothbrush and dip a little bit on there and go in there and s s scrub to, to make sure that you get the crud cutter on everything and you get any hard grease um, softened up because then that crud cutter can really really uh, wipe it out so let me just set it up here a little bit now I can see uh, from tilting it I've got some of the crud cutter came down here a little bit and I, I don't really want to leave that on there so I'm just going to go in with this and wipe wipe it up um, yeah see look can you see that see how it's ran down inside the plastic here so that's what I'm cautioning you against. Like if you clean this up now and took took that crud cutter off with Q-tips and a rag and stuff, uh, the time that it's been on there wouldn't be long enough. I don't feel to hurt the paint. So let me put this rag down in here. And I just want to leave it sit there, you know, just like 10 or 10 or, uh, let me back out here, just 10 or 15 minutes. I took my plastic off. You can see maybe where some of it leaked out of this area because I had the machine tilted down. I usually don't get that much leakage when I stand it up. So I just like to leave that uh, stuff here when it's not on the. I'm just going to do this to show you how how quick it'll get that grease off. See how that corner right there came nice and clean, got all the black junk off of there. Nice. Um, you know I've left it on really bad machines. One time I had a 403 that was. Wow, I, I don't know what was dried on there, but it was hard, hard. And uh, I protected the body and everything real well. I think I had rubber bands and tied it up, plastic, everything. And I would let that stuff sit on there a half hour and come back and brush more. And I did that three or four times. So the crud cutter might have been on there about um, four hours maybe. So I'm just going to give it about uh, ten minutes or so here. And then we'll come back and uh, pull out the cotton stuff and take a look at it and uh, do a little rinse with alcohol. Okay. Okay, I've, I've let that uh, soak now for about 15 minutes. So uh, my next step that I do, and I'm not even sure if this is necessary to clean that crud cutter off, but I just take a little of... Uh, alcohol I use the 91 percent when when I can find it and just put about a teaspoon or a tablespoon or so in there and when you saw me painting that before I'm just gonna do like the same thing with the alcohol just to because the crud cutter can kinda dry up and stuff and you know you, it's leaving a film it washed all that grease off so I'll just go through with the alcohol I leave those cotton pads in there and uh, just let me put it straight up here so I don't drip a lot of it out of there and once I uh, kind of wash it down a little bit with the alcohol then I, I pull out those cotton pads and then if there's drips and dribbles I'll go in with a, a q-tip or a rag a cloth anything like that to to get the uh, 
any residue out. But this uh, this is a, a good method when you don't want to break everything down or, or degrease the whole machine, and uh, it really doesn't it does it doesn't take that long really. Everything looks pretty pretty good in there. Just seeing if I got any stubborn stuff between those deep grooves in the worm gear. Mm -hmm. Looks pretty good though. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, I'll take out some of these cotton pads. Uh, let's see if I can. Sometimes I can dig them out with the, you know, the pointy end of these little bamboo barbecue sticks. But sometimes I'll just go in there with a needle nose. I guess this would be good if I knew how to use chopsticks. Maybe that would be easier way, huh? Some bamboo chopsticks to get that out. Okay. And you see they come out mostly um, intact. You can see something cut on something sharp here on this end and pull the little stuffing out. I can go in and get another one out. And got a couple more here in the towards the bottom. And I think I got one over in here. Yep. So you see the first time around I actually got most of the grease and, and grime out of there. So let me get these out of the way here and we'll take a look back in here now. Mm -hmm. I'd like to show you that if it will show up on the camera. You'll see a little filming here. A little film from the alcohol and that crud cutter and the grease. But just just barely like a little bit cloudy. So I'll just take a rag and dip it in the alcohol and I'll go in there and rub that shaft while I rotate the hand wheel and get up there on the area and around the cam stack and like I said you gotta turn it a whole lot to uh, do a one revolution of that cam stack. So, but yeah, that's looking really, really pretty nice to me. Go in and find a little bit cleaner spot and dry it there. If you remember back in the beginning of this kind of long video when I showed you before the cleaning um, how how much grease and grime and everything were in there. Let me get this off, lift up the tripod here and we'll try and, we'll try and uh, zoom in here. There we go. It's not too bad of a, of a shot there. Nice and clean and down into that camp stack area. A uh, little bit harder to get in there. But I have to tell you, I've taken out cam stacks a few times to just get stuff super clean. And I just don't feel that it's... If there's not a problem with the cam stack or any of the cams, to me it's just not worth the effort anymore. It's, it, you know, it's not too hard to, to take out and stuff, but there's a lot of adjusting all of these uh, levers and followers and everything when you, when you put it back in and the stitch width and, oh man, it's just a lot of extra work to get a, a, another tiny bit of grease or grime out of there. 
So when I do the full body wash method, um, it gets most of that. So I just don't, I just really, I haven't taken out a cam stack completely in a long time. And that one had uh, a little dollop of grease down in there. Um, that one had a problem um, with it. And it actually turned out there was two teeth damage on the cam stack gear itself. Um, there, something had, I think had fallen in there and got chewed up and and bent a couple of the cam stack gears. So anyway, that's uh, that's my method for cleaning the worm gear and cam stack gear area um, while it's in place. You know, without dismantling more of the machine and stuff. And then, of, of course, I can just put my, you know, turn this so that my um, steel steel pin is in the front where I had it, and I can put my uh, double thick cam, my single thick, and put the kind of thumb wheel thing back on there with my little spring and the screw and um, I'll put a link at the end of the uh, video as I said to show I'll find one of the videos I did about how to grease this up um, and the kind of grease I use but you know if nothing else get the Singer lube yeah, that's only two or three bucks at like Walmart or whatever. But be sure you use a lubricant that's okay for sewing machines. Don't use lithium. Don't use axle grease. Stuff like that. Thanks for tuning in. For those of you that were asking me, I hope that that will give you a good idea of how I go about it, since you were interested. And I hope you come back and visit me. Take care.